This is the final video in my mini-series to introduce the eight thinking maps. If you have watched the previous parts, thank you for investing your time. If you haven't, I hope you will check them out as well. If you find these videos helpful, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. The bridge map will stretch your imagination. Use it to explore connections in your knowledge by way of looking for analogies. In its simplest form, a bridge map connects two pairs of words by a relating factor. The relating factor is typically a verb. For example, a bridge map is used for analogies, just as a multiflow map is used for representing cause and effect relationships. You may also extend your bridge with additional analogies, such as a flow map is used for sequencing events, just as a brace map is used for exploring the parts of a whole, just as a tree map is used for categorizing stuff, just as a double bubble map is used for comparing ideas, just as a bubble map is used for describing the attributes of things, just as the circle map is used for defining concepts and context. You get the idea. The bridge may also cross domains. To stick with the previous example, analogies do not all need to be thinking maps related. I could continue this crossover bridge like this. Excolidra is used for sketching out your ideas, just as Obsidian is used for note-taking, just as a Racy Matrix is used for defining roles and responsibilities, and so on. You can also build multi-level bridges. For example, a bridge map is used for analogies, just as a multi-flow map is used for cause and effect relationships. And in turn, analogies will strengthen your mastery of new skills by way of creating mental links, just as understanding cause and effect relationships will strengthen your decisions by building awareness of what drives different outcomes. This is all good, but it does sound a bit elementary school-ish. So how is this useful to an adult? To be perfectly honest, I struggled for days to find credible, practical use cases. In the end, I found four. Learning new skills, finding creative solutions to problems, linking your thinking, stealing the phrase from Nick Milo, and creating brain puzzles. We will look at three of these today. Let's start with learning new skills. Outliers is a must-read from Malcolm Gladwell. He argues that it takes 10,000 hours of intensive practice to achieve mastery of a complex skill. But in today's fast-changing world, you do not have 10,000 hours. James Altucher in Skip the Line talks about the idea of borrowing hours to achieve the 10,000 hours faster by taking skills you've acquired in one field and applying them to another. But without knowing that the skills needed overlap with ones you already have, it will take a long time to make the direct translation. This is where the bridge map may help you. For example, say you're an experienced project manager, a black belt in traditional waterfall project delivery, and you're learning agile product development, you may borrow hours from traditional project management and apply them to agile by exploring analogies using a bridge map. In a waterfall project, user requirements are captured in specifications, just as in agile product development, user requirements are documented in user stories. In waterfall project delivery, timeline is estimated by developing and managing a detailed schedule based on a well-defined scope, work breakdown structure, resources, task dependencies, and more. Just as in Agile, delivery timeline is estimated by measuring the product's theme velocity and applying that measure to the prioritized user stories in the product backlog. In traditional project management, delivery is controlled through steering committee meetings. Just as in Agile product development, delivery is controlled through the bi-weekly sprint demos. And finally, in a waterfall project, scope change is approved via the change control process, just as in Agile product development, the product backlog is prioritized based on customer value. 
Now let's see how you can use the bridge map for linking your thinking. As I was learning about the bridge map and thinking about its practical application, I identified two permanent nodes in my Zettelkasten by reflecting on how the bridge map connects analogies. The bridge map connects analogies just as borrowed skills connect existing skills with the new ones, just as random input connects a problem with an unexpected creative solution. Notice how borrowed skills and random inputs are links to permanent notes in my vault. Before closing, I'd like to leave you with a couple of riddles. If you get stuck, Google them. I'm confident that a little search will yield the solutions. So once again, the bridge map will help you think about analogies. You can use the bridge map for finding unexpected connections in your thinking, such as when learning a new skill or looking for a creative solution to a problem. This concludes my series on the thinking maps. I hope you found it insightful and that you will adopt these visual tools in your daily note-taking and creative process. Don't forget to subscribe so you are notified of future videos. Thank you for watching.